Well, one of the th points you made about the Fertile Crescent, where the original, in a sense, the first cities yeah. took shape, uh, is that it was later referred to as the Fragile Crescent because of basically climate instability in that area. Mm -hmm. And how does the fragile crescent play out in terms of cities? So the idea of, you know, we all grew up with the Mesopotamia as the, the fertile crescent, you know, the hilly <coughs> flanks of the fertile crescent, which made, made it sound like it was this ideal place for a cities to come up. And then all the archaeologists who went to work there said, oh, God, it's really hot, and it's like there's, <laughs> it's drought, and the farmers keep losing their crops, and it burns, and so on. This is not fertile. This is awful. Um, so it's... a an archaeologist, Tony Wilkinson, and his group who came up with the idea of the fragile crescent. Ah, now that's really interesting because it suggests that cities come up not in places that are really wonderful, but in cities, in places that have some kind of problem, right? So immediately you think of something like New Orleans. Right? New Orleans probably really ought not to still exist. Mm -hmm. But people just keep going back and mopping it up because it has something that overcomes that liability. Mm -hmm. So maybe cities thrive and survive because they are inherently dependent on creativity to exist at all. I think that's a really wild idea. You know, that with that synergy of creativity is what makes cities persist. If you think about it, in the last thousand years, there is not a single city that has been abandoned, except for maybe Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. 